Hi guys and welcome Gnemon here. About a year ago we had a video talking about some tweaks that can be done to managing player inventory with Scarpet Apps and a couple weeks ago Zuma has been discussing potential improvements to the shulker boxes that could bring some more organization to the items. In today's video we'll be looking into those suggestions and get them implemented as Scarpet Apps. The thing is Two of them, Vacuum, which is the ability of sugar boxes to fetch in items automatically, and Restock, which is the opposite, to feed us items from their inventory, do not require any interface changes. So with a capable data pack system or a plugin system, however you name it, they should be possible without additional changing or modding the game. The third suggestion, larger inventories for shocker boxes not only would need proper modding, but also you can debate it throws the storage options in this game out of balance. You see, back in the village and pillage update, I've been talking with a developer about why not to have double barrels just by stacking them on top of each other. And the rationale was that it would make double chests, which are more expensive to render and oddly shaped, and in general worse than barrels, obsolete. And I get that, chests are pretty much only good because they can be doubled. A shulker box with a double inventory in a single block would throw that out of balance for sure. And the last thing that will save the other storage containers would be the cost, which lots of people are debating shouldn't be even a thing in the first place, that you even should be able to farm shulker boxes. I think so too. Plus, double inventory size for shulker boxes doesn't really solve the primary reason for our current inventory issues. That you still have this weird mechanic that in order to take stuff out of the shulker boxes you need to find the appropriate one first, then place it, you need to access it, get the item you need, and then you have to clean up after yourself. And if you have your inventory doubled with an ender chest, you first need to place an ender chest, get the appropriate shulker box, place that shulker box, get the item, break your box, put it back in the ender chest, break the ender chest and put it back into your inventory. That's quite a bit of annoying mantra you need to perform just to restock one item. Having things fly in and out of your inventory in some sort of automatic and coordinated way would help to address these issues. And that's why we have the idea of a vacuum feature, which is automatic item storing, and restock, which is the automatic item extraction. Now, with vacuum, how it was proposed by Exuma, it would only fill unfilled slots in the vacuum-capable sugar boxes. This means that we can easily control what goes into them and where. But this also means that we will only be able to store stackable items, which I'm perfectly fine with. In terms of the mechanic of doing it, there are two ways we can go about it. First is by detecting when players receive an item in their inventory and then removing them from the inventory and putting into a proper shulker boxes. And the second is by tracking items entities colliding with a player since it turns out players ingest items simply by getting in contact with them. And if we can intercept them before it gets into the inventory, we could place it in a more appropriate spot instead. Both approaches have their merits. If we do it after the fact, we don't need to deal with the whole animation part of the item ingesting, we'll probably get all the statistics right. If there is an extra side effect of getting an item in, we'll get it in. At this point, we are just simply shuffling stuff around within the inventory. But there are two buts. First is that even if we still have place inside the shulker boxes for certain items, if our regular inventory is full, we will not be able to get these items anyways. And the second problem is that even if we know how many items we have just ingested, we still have no idea where exactly they were placed. In situations where we have not so filled stacks at the start, the same amount could have been distributed over several slots. We could record the layout of the inventory before this happens, but that would be a little too expensive since we would need to record that for every single item, even those that should not go into the shulker boxes. We will still move a proper amount of items, it's just in a different order. I would say it's a small issue that I'm fine to live with, but it might be a deal breaker for some other people. The second approach inspects the item entities before they get into the ingestion space around the player, which is depicted here with this orange box around us. And if the item gets in contact with that space, it will be added to player inventory, at least what fits from that item. This removes the drawback of the previous solution because we will have a chance to ingest an item that could fit in the shulker boxes even if the main inventory is still full and will also not mess up with our current stacks. But we will bypass some extra features of ingesting items like pickup statistics, potentially sounds, some animations, we'll see. But all of these could be added 
in post. It's just a little bit more coding work. On top of that, no matter how we implement it, we won't be able to use custom enchantments to detect that. The thing is, the game just doesn't support custom enchantments with data packs, even though it's really just a piece of text. Maybe at some point they'll add that capability for custom enchantments to the data packs, but for now, for us, any shulker box that has the word vacuum in its name will use as a vacuum shulker box. So let's go to the drawing board. So here is the code for our first version of the item pickup app. The two ways of applying the pickup will be controlled by the strategy variable, and by flicking it on and off, we'll be able to use one or the other. In the first one, we'll be observing the item pickup event, which gives us information about the amount and the type of ingested items, and we'll then verify if it's stackable item, and if so, locate the existing stack in the inventory to pull items from. And that has at least the required amount of items, and that will always work unless we try to ingest an overstacked item group, which could only happen due to some glitches and in modded but never in vanilla, so that's not a big deal. Then we will try to add that amount of items to the shulker boxes and then adjust the stack in the player inventory to reflect the number of items that we have managed to squeeze into the shulker boxes. In the second item collision strategy, we will be tracking the item colliding with the player pickup range, and if they don't have any pickup delay, we'll try to ingest as much of them as we can. And then just adjust the item count on the item, and if there is nothing left, just remove it, not forgetting about adding the good old plop sound that we all know and love from picking up items. Below we have a method that will attempt to add an item with its count to the vacuum shulker boxes. In this case we'll be going both through player inventory as well as the ender chest, because why not? This just doubles the opportunities. This way we can store items directly in the ender chest. If you think that's a little bit too much, just remove this part, I guess. Then we'll be going through all the inventory slots, searching for shulker box of any color that is a stack of one, like all shulker boxes are, has a custom name with the word vacuum in it, and then has some items. And then we'll be going through all the shulker box items, looking for the same item with the same tag that has a stack that's not full yet, and add all our items into these slots. And then when we run out of our stack to add, we'll just stop this search. Otherwise, we'll just continue with the rest of the stack. So now let's check how this worked out in practice. I have here a very good use case for a vacuum shulker box, which is the blocks collection. In this case, I have a shulker full of sand, single items, and if we pack it up and just start shoveling, as you can see, items just start popping up into our inventory, but the sound count is not growing. Which is great, because with this method we are also getting a feedback of taking in items, you can see by the animation, but still doesn't grow. Nice! One funny effect of this approach is if we only have one available slot in the inventory, just for one more item, this will only remove count one from an item stack at a time, meaning that ingestion of a full stack of items will take quite some time. And actually that does not happen when we have a space for more, since the vanilla pickup will be taking in lots more items at a time. Now let's try the other method, the collision method. It looks like it's working, I mean it should work, but not only we are not getting any feedback about the ingested items, but also items just disappear instead of giving us a familiar sweep towards us. And this is because not something that I actually didn't know about, just learned because of this, is that on the server side where all the game mechanics happen, items actually just disappear, and that the items that rush towards us is just a particle effect filling in for an item that's already long gone. Little funny mechanics, but this means that we will need to replicate that ourselves somehow. So let's go back to the drawing board. So first thing that I've done is modified our item insertion method to allow it to only check if the item can be added to the shulker box inventories, and not actually add them. This doesn't change anything for our pickup tracking method, but in the collision based pickup, in case we were not able to add all of the items, this doesn't change much, we just add that the second time, this time for real. But in case you would ingest the entire item and just make it go poof, Instead of removing it, we change it so it cannot be picked up for the next 20 ticks by uh, changing the pickup delay. Then we define a time for animation to give us 3 extra ticks, that's exactly how long it takes for Vanilla Particle to appear for us, which is 3 ticks, and let them just follow us. The thing is, we've already dinged the item, but still didn't take anything from it. 
And that is important because this time around the item is actually in the game so its content can still change. Other items may try to merge into it or a hopper may pick some of it up. And that's what makes it slightly different than vanilla pickup since we would still have to analyze it after it comes to us. So during our animation we'll be dropping some random portal particles to indicate that the items are not just being ingested into the inventory but being ingested into our vacuum shulker boxes. And if it's still within this three tick animation period we just give him an extra kick or acceleration towards the player. And if that time passes we just ingest the items now for real and remove the items for real as well. So this should look like it does in vanilla with the exception that the item will still follow the general entity physics not the particle sprite physics. And the final result? It's actually pretty pleasing and it's pretty realistic. And yeah, we have a working vacuum ender chest. One really cool application for it is now we can actually use a player as a sorting system. If you have organized your items in your shulker boxes so they always know the slot they need to go either for your personal ender chest storage or as a part of your multi-item sorting system like this one, if we have all those boxes inside our inventory or ender chest and start breaking some random chests around with some random junk, what could fit into your ender chest storage will make into it rather than be left on the floor. So this could be your ultimate junk chest cleanup solution and it's actually a pretty cool use case. Now for the restock, that's something that we've actually touched on last time when we talked about player inventories. So anytime players uses an item or right clicks a block or releases an item which means that stops using it or finishes using them like for example eating they may use up an item from the inventory but also when you break a block or attack an entity you may lose a tool or when you interact with entity you may also cause an item to disappear as well as dropping an item or dropping entire stacks you may want to restock a player inventory in any of these scenarios or maybe in some of them leaving for example dropping of items as an untracked event. It's all up to you. I'll be adding restock to all of these actions. Now there are still several questions that will affect the way the restock would work. Maybe we would want to swap the item in the inventory anytime we use an item or maybe only when you run out of the stack completely. Also, do we want to restock it with just one item at a time or maybe we just want to swap the entire stacks that's next in the shulker box? Then it's like, how would we know which box to use for restock? I would assume that in most use cases you don't want to take a shulker box that already has such items in it, not to mix in items that should not be restocked. Or maybe we just want to designate a special slots. So always we suck items from them into a specific slot. A shulker box, for example, right above the hotbar slot, allowing us to draw any items in this place. Then when we have decided which shulker box to restock with, which item do we choose from that shulker box? The one that matched exactly, or the, maybe the one right next to it, maybe a random one that might be useful as well, or maybe just always the first item from the box. This way we can have some sort of priority system to use up resources in a specific order. Decisions, decisions. So let's go back to the drawing board where I prepared some examples. So the refill you would want, as I said, to track several events, logging the item that player is using before the event has an effect on the inventory, and then repeat that check after everything is changed in this regard. Since however certain events trigger multiple of these at the same time for various reasons, instead of directly calling the pre and post checks, we'd like to store them in some sort of a queue, not to award the player twice for certain items. This makes sure that only one entity action will actually do something with the player. Now for all the options for restocking, I listed several scenarios. For example, a food or ender pearl or a rocket slot would like to restock the first slot in the shulker box that says exactly the same item. For example, replacing it at a stack when we run out of. With tools, it's only one item at a time, but items are also not stackable, so stack option would work here as well. For block placing, maybe you would like to restock same exact item when stack just decreases. But that starts implying that when decreases means that the item is still in the inventory, meaning that we could replace the same stack with the same effect. For random block placing we would want a random item that's from a shulker box that matches exactly our current item or maybe not and just take the first shulker box, replacing just one item when our stack decreases but then 
This can lead to problems when we don't have enough spaces to stash our previous stack and it's not the same item as the one that we are replacing it with. And then, for example, if we wanted to do a checkerboard pattern, we would like to have a next item to do with one that matches, replacing a full stack when our item just decreases. Many combinations of many of these just doesn't make sense, so parsing all of these phrases would not be that useful. Decisions, decisions, and actually that's why you have this one as a script, like a data pack, that you can tailor to your needs and just cross out what you don't like. And also, as you can see, the code swapping actually is still empty at this time. So give me a moment and we'll check what I come up with. So after many deliberations and honestly just thinking what to do and how to do it right, took me about two evenings, I decided to keep two of these parameters. So first is which item to choose from a matching box. And the box would be the first one that matches the item to replace for. So we won't be replacing by accident item that we don't have in the sugar box. And from the possible options, we have the same item, which is pretty straightforward. Next item in the sugar box list, which would mean that you need to remember the order of items that we actually extract with the actual sugar box in their inventory, which is some extra hassle to do that, but we'll go back to that in a moment. Random, this one is pretty straightforward. It's just a random item. And then the first one, which is also pretty straightforward, the first item in the shulker box. In terms of when to do it, a restock would mean an action when your current stack completely runs out. So you bring it up to zero and then we restock. And then a swap would be after every time we actually decrease the item stack, which will be useful in some automatic building, which we'll go back to in a moment. So leaves with only a few options that we can, again, and code with the name of the shulker box. The default would be the restock same for the simple type restock when we run out of blocks, rockets or food or etc. For a pattern placer, we would like to have a swap next or swap random. Same deal here with a little warning that we need at least two stacks of each item in the shulker box in order to find that shulker box again when we are swapping it back for the item that's the rarest. And actually that would make our search stateless, so we don't have to remember which sugar box we used it for, which is probably the way to go, so it simplifies the entire procedure. Also another special use case that might be useful is if the item morphs into something else, like placing lava buckets, we would swap with same buckets. That would be a special case when our count is actually not decreasing, and but the item changes. Another possible option would be some sort of low-lit crossbows, but I'll leave that out at this time. Options are limitless with that. And since it would be also possible to have multiple boxes matching the same item, in case we're using some sort of block palettes with repeating blocks, we want to have some sort of powers to use several of these palettes at once and not mix them up. And for that, we will have to use some search order criterion. So let's visualize it. So let's fill up our entire inventory with markers showing up slot numbers. And let's do the same with the ender chest. Kablama. And now, for example, if we decide to restock slot number 5, we would first check slot number 32, then 23, then 14. Then we'll go and check 23, 14, and 5 from the ender chest. And then we'll go to the next slice. So 6, 32, 24, and so on. Eventually scanning through the entire extended inventory. So if you use unambiguous boxes, you can put wherever you want, it doesn't matter, but if you're using palettes with repeating blocks for random or sequential placing, you can place them directly above your slot that you want to use them with desired effect. I think this is the best solution. So let's quickly go back to the drawing board for the final version. So when checking if the slot has changed, we can replace the item if the item didn't change, stay the same, but the count decreased or we dealt with the bucket placing situation. In case the count has to stay the same and be one and the item needs to be that special case. And in this case, we can keep adding that conditions if you want to for other items, if you want to swap their stack. This function here just returns this wacky order for inventory slot to search that I just described. So now when swapping the item, we will need to go through all the inventory slots with that wacky order just shown, looking for shocker boxes with a name, 
with the name actually matching the restock or swap, followed by the word same, next, random or first, somewhere within its name. And then if the action is restock, we also require that the previous stack, is the one that we just restocked, is empty, because we want to restock empty stacks only. And then at the end, we need to know that the shulker has some items as well. In that case, we go through all the shulker stacks looking for our search item. And if you find one, we either take that exact stack to swap out, or we choose a random one based on the strategy, or maybe choose the first one regardless of what we choose. Or if it's the next one, this one's actually a little shitty because we need to remember in the item tag the order of what was the last item we took it from the box and give it the next one. It's a little inconvenience because if we place and pick up the shulker again, that order and the items in the shulker box will already be likely scrambled, meaning that the sequence placement, we need to stick into the building plan if we don't want to reorganize the items again and start from scratch. But that's a small price to pay for AFQ item placing and the automatic reset when you place the shulker box it kind of makes sense. Then we just need to swap the selected item and either drop the items back into the shulker box or just free that spot if we just replaced it with an empty stack. So let's check that in action. First is actually a very good example of a good block storage box. Restock same, where we have all sorts of blocks, food items from this will be only replacing these items when their stack is fully used and will only be replacing with the same item. But this also means that we can use it for tools as well, since for restock, unlike vacuum, we'll be not matching the NBT. Works nicely, like you would expect it to do. Second is our lava box. Very useful stuff, allowing us to restock at least 27 times 27 times 2 for the ender chest of lava buckets. They don't stack, but that doesn't matter in this case. So next is our, our standard fireworks box. In this case, instead of restock same, I put swap next. And you have just thrown a vacuum for a good measure. Meaning, to fill it back up, we don't need to worry about moving it out of the inventory. We just need to drop rockets on us. In this case, we should be able to fire six fireworks until we see the stack decrease by one. And then only we'll need to restock fully when we get close to zero with one of those stacks. And that should indicate the emptying rocket supply. That's pretty useful. The next one, which is swap random, is our Russian roulette box. We start placing redstone blocks and I guess you have to figure out when it explodes. This box is actually very useful for player randomization. Speaking of palettes and randomization, here is a random stone brick variant palette, which you may want to use for a wall or something. In this case, it's swap random, which means that we will be drawing a random block from it every time. As you can see, each block is represented at least twice, so we will not break up the chain that easily. The next box is the same swap random, just with grassy blocks for a path or something like that. As you can see, most stone bricks are repeating in both boxes, but that shouldn't matter since we'll be using them carefully together and just placing them above the inventory slots here will disambiguate the situation. And the last one is our pattern shulker box, which we can use to build a fence, for example. In this case, it's a swap next. So this should suffice for 64 segments of our fence that we were planning over here to build. Before we continue, a note from me, the editor, I totally forgot about other replaceable stuff, so the app that we'll be able to download would support other items that can morph into other types from count of one rather than deplete fully, like potions, the primary non-stackable annoyance, but also stews, uh, soups, also filled flasks of various stuff like honey, these can go into the swap same box. And with crossbow, since the item still remains technically the same, it's still a crossbow item, to use it as a machine gun you need a box with swap next filled with crossbows uh, to pick up the next crossbow. And then you can use that with the restocking box. Just have some fun with it. So let's now uh, do first some random path segment. As you can see, the stone brick gets nicely replaced with other grassy blocks from that grassy palette. Now let's maybe uh, build a few meters of the random stone brick wall. The 
as you can see pretty cool stuff obviously we can just come at the end and just tweak the randomness that doesn't fit us 100 percent but at least we have something to start with we can try to experiment for example with stacks of different sizes that some blocks may actually run out faster than others and we can get gradients this way so it's actually it would be pretty interesting to see how this can be used so for the last one let's try to make our fence pattern just by right clicking i'm not moving anything in the inventory and our scheduled structure just repeats and builds under our eyes pretty nice as well that's all what I have planned for you today. The concept of a vacuum and the restock shulker boxes implemented as carpet apps. Now the question is, is vacuum and restock really needed for vanilla Minecraft? You see, we had a lot of decisions we had to make in terms of how to put it together and when to vacuum, when to restock, when don't. And several people will have different opinions about how this should and shouldn't be done. The thing is, what the game really needs is a capable plugin or scripting uh, or app system that is better designed and more flexible than the existing command system, like the Scarpet language, or something like that. The thing is, nobody complains that there is no one player sleeping because the data pack system can add these in post. If you want to customize your crafting recipes or obtain otherwise non-renewable resources, you can just do that in vanilla with data packs. Wouldn't it be nice if things like vacuum shocker boxes or a simple things like a vein miner could just be added with data packs as well? I think that's the direction the game should be going to. In that case, you wouldn't blame the devs for implementing the feature wrongly because you have implemented that yourself. On the other note, last time we had a video about portals and I asked you to guess how did I manage to disable portals in 1.16 and lots of you were guessing that for example that I have a string here in the portal or maybe that was this chicken's fault. But the correct answer, and actually a few of you got it right, was actually wasn't in the overworld. I was in a custom test dimension which you can create in 1.16 with data packs. It might as well be a copy of your overworld dimension, but portals can only be lit in the overworld and in the nether. So for example, if I move to the overworld, as you can see, now the portals work. And if we move back to the test dimension, as you can see, it doesn't. Some of you were guessing that I changed the allow nether option in the server properties and that I was running a server, but in this case you can actually lit the portal, just the portals will not take you anywhere. In custom dimensions though, currently you can't lit another portal at all, however if you manage to spawn it in, in any shape or form, pretty much only with a command at this point, you can actually use it. That brings you to the regular nether. Go figure. So that's it guys for today. The link to this carpet app as well as how to install it and to run it with your own world is in the description. You need to run a carpet mod to use it but you don't need anything else enabled from a carpet mod if you don't want to. So if you enjoyed the video, like the idea, don't forget to leave me a like, comment if you would like to have done something differently or just want to share a few nice words and see you in the next one. Bye bye!